भी सी है Good to be out at the house of the Lord again tonight. This place which serves that purpose. And I am very grateful for this opportunity to minister again tonight. Last night we had an exceedingly abundantly great time. I did anyhow. The Lord poured out his blessings upon me to I couldn't sleep half the night. And then he, I was reading a little article. Someone wrote me a letter and sent a little piece in the paper. And the Lord gave me a, an outstanding thought on it. Uh, if he be willing, tomorrow afternoon, I want to express it right here to the, preach on it. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm on my afternoon meeting. Now, we're having... The reason we are doing, having the afternoon meeting. Now, Brother Sullivan invited me up to fellowship with his people and you people here. And he opened it up in the armory so that it wouldn't altogether be in his church. I think that's real gentlemanlike, don't you think so? Real brotherly. Another thing, we decided that we thought it would be nice. If we didn't have a Sunday night service, so that you people would not miss any of your regular services, you could have Sunday school and then also have Sunday night service. And some of you members of the churches, I, I wish you would express that to your pastor if he isn't in the meeting. That that's the reason we do that. We are not here to try to. To hinder the uh, the cause of Christ, we're here to try to help the cause of Christ, trying to do all we can to cooperate together in every measure that we can to help the people. And uh, instead of Brother Sullivan just saying, "Well, now we'll just have it uh, up to my church," why he put it in the auditorium, and uh, so that everybody could see that it was no selfish motive. And then instead of having on Sunday night, we make it Sunday afternoon, which is always the smaller crowds on Sunday afternoon. This Sunday night, but we uh, we are not here for money. We are not here to see how many people we can attract. We are only here to try to put our part in for the kingdom of God to help everybody. That's what we're here for. Now this is all for record, and Brother Sullivan don't know that I know this, but I know up to this time he's short on the finances of the meeting. Now, tomorrow afternoon will not be a love offering; it'll be an expense offering. And if expenses isn't made tomorrow afternoon, I'll wire home immediately to the church, and we'll pay every penny of it all before we leave this city. There'll not be nothing left, no debts we leave behind. We don't make, don't get the expenses tomorrow afternoon in the love offering. You make it a love offering to the Lord Jesus instead of me, so he can go to pay the debts. Now, Brother Sullivan's going to pay that himself, but he ain't going to do that. No, I ain't going to let him do that. No, we're we're going to do it ourselves. And then, if there isn't sufficient to finish the the meeting, then I will find out, and we'll wire the money up here from our own church at Jeffersonville to finish the debt to finish the. So everything is paid off the chairs, the auditorium, the advertisement, whatever it was in it, we'll pay it all off to see that it's paid off. Won't be no, no more than right to the to Brother Sullivan and the people. Now, if you would, I wish you would, and if your pastor isn't here, if you'd invite the church to come out tomorrow afternoon, it'll be a, a prophetic message that I think that seems to me that the Holy Spirit laid up on my heart. After reading an article today, that I should bring that message tomorrow. And now, then, the next service is that I have, as far as I know, is Easter Sunday at the Tabernacle, where there be baptismal services and so forth. And we go to Bloomington, Illinois. Brother Sullivan invited me to stay a couple of days of next week if I could. I'm just too tired to do it. Please. My throat's gone. <laughs> I'm just—I've been in services since Christmas. 
See? And I'm really, really tired and look forward to this uh, three, four, five days, whatever it is there, to, to rest. And I can't stay at home to do that. I just have to go out somewhere and rest it because I've got Sunday through Sunday, and then I go from there to Chicago Sunday through Sunday, and then from there to the Grand Prairie, British uh, uh, Alberta, and from there to, to Dawson Creek, British Columbia, and perhaps Fort St. John, on and on and down Miami, Florida, and maybe over here at Washington, D.C. this summer in a big tent. <clears throat> the Lord willing, the businessman there sent word down the other night, so lovely, when we was in Richmond, a businessman of Washington, D.C. sent me a special letter that the meeting we had there that night, one night, I believe it's in Congress Hall or that, some hall there in Washington, they won't come back again and put up a great big tent. And they said, if we didn't make the expenses down at the Richmond, why they would just not say anything about it, they'd make it themselves, a Christian businessman. Now that's really standing by him. But the Lord come in and we made the expenses, everything all went all right at Richmond. So um, I may be going up there, uh, if not a leading, just for the fellowship of those precious brothers who you're standing by in, a, in times like that. Now, but be sure to remember tomorrow afternoon, if that will begin, I guess Brother Sullivan has already tell two o'clock, and uh, say, by the way, if we... If we don't, I believe they give out some cards last night. I believe Billy told me they give out cards last night. Number A's, and I got too late to call up, call them up here to pray for them. I'll try to get them tonight if I can. If I don't, I'll sure get them tomorrow. And I'll have him come down tomorrow. And, and, and in the afternoon, we can keep running over, over, over a little later. If we have to say we're going in at 4 o'clock, but we can run over to 5, and we can get everybody prayed for. And then if they're going to... If you got any sick people now that you want me to pray for, I have a very strange feeling about some things. So you better have them here tomorrow. See? And uh, so it may be after a while that you won't hear me no more. So if you want me to pray for your loved ones, then you you bring them in tomorrow afternoon. See? And um, and then we'll give them a prayer card. If they start at two, you better be here by. Uh, Quarter after one or one thirty at the least, you see. And I'll have Brother Leo, Gene, and Billy and them to come down and give the people their prayer cards, uh, uh, whatever you, anybody wants a prayer card. And you know the system, the way we do them. We, tomorrow, we probably just give them out because we're just going to, uh, try to see how many of the people are sick that wants to be prayed for. Now, before we, to go any farther, let's speak to our great royal master, the Lord Jesus, in whom we have our infinite trust in him and his amazing grace. How many like to be remembered in prayer? Just let it be known by an uplifted hand. The Lord bless you, my people, while we bow our heads. Our most holy and righteous God and Father. We come into thy presence tonight with humble hearts and, and spirits that are ready and willing to receive of thy message. We would ask you to anoint us, Lord, to finish this uh, chapter on Abraham and his children after him. I pray that you will bless the message tonight and the messenger and those who receive it. Get glory unto thyself, and if it be thy will that we pray for the sick, May there be an exceeding abundance of joy and power among us tonight. Save those who are not saved. Heal those who are not healed. Fill with the Holy Spirit those that are seeking your power and blessings. Give grace to us all, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe the boys has been giving out a little book here, I think this called, oh yes, The Christian Businessman's Voice. How many's got it? That's good. If you haven't got it, get it tonight. It's got Gene, I wonder if I could ask you or somebody, get the boys at the doors, wherever they go out or somebody, 
What are they selling them for? They're ten cents. If you haven't got the ten cents, take it anyhow. I'll pay for it. See, I want you to read this testimony here of the vision. Just I want every person in here to have one. If you if you can't, why well, you just charge them to me? And um, everyone, be sure to get one tonight. They're they're the voice of the Christian businessman, and they wrote a vision in there that the Lord gave me recently, and it just set my heart on fire. Uh, they don't have it all in here. Brother Tommy Hicks, or Tommy, I um, can't think of his name, the editor, just now. Um, uh, Nichols, thank you, Brother G. Brother Tommy Nichols wrote it, but he, he didn't put it all in there, but it was, he never put it in there about when I seen my, I don't think put it in there anyhow, about seeing my dog and my horse coming to me. You see. I think maybe that's question amongst people. When you think of animals being in the kingdom, but they are. Where is those horses that come out of Elijah? Where is that when Jesus is coming riding on the armies of heaven? <laughs> See, when's the wolf and the lamb going to feed together? <laughs> they, just, they just think we just get our cut ideas and. And if something don't suit that, well, then we just don't want nothing to do with it. That's such a trouble. But, uh, however, that's all right. And there's enough there. And then you notice down at the bottom, it had, did you read the little, little inset at the bottom about raising the dead? Now, I remember before you publish anything, you have to be able to prove that. So we've got documented statements from doctors, mayors of the city, and so forth like that, that doctors pronounced them dead and gone for as many as eight and ten hours, and coming back to life again through prayer. So it's a documented statement. This book goes all over the world and translated in different languages and everything. It's like a Reader's Digest amongst the Christian people, and it has to be authentic, and you have to prove those things when you say them. You have to be... So the one they got to prove was... Before you could write that, it was down there in Mexico about three years ago when I was down there and that little Spanish woman holding that baby, it died that morning at nine o'clock and the Lord raised it back to life at ten o'clock that night in the meeting and it's kicking her in that blanket, standing there and 30,000 people about this standing, uh, leaned against one another since early that morning, all day in the rain and everything, just to hear the gospel. So. People like that is, God will do exceeding abundance for people when they come together like that and will believe and hum, humble their hearts down before God. Now, I want to read that scripture over that I read last night because I want to finish up on that same subject and we won't stay long tonight. Now, you visitors here, you know where the full gospel tabernacle is where Brother Sullivan's pastor? <laughs> All right. That's a good place to go in the morning. You live close to any of these other full gospel churches around here? That's a good place to go to hear the word of the Lord. So now, attend Sunday school somewhere tomorrow. Just hold your colors and stay at the post of duty. Now, I believe I'm reading from Genesis, the 22nd chapter and the 14th verse. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto this day, and the mount of the Lord shall be seen. The reason I read the scriptures is because if what I say doesn't take effect, surely what he said will take effect. My word is the word of a man. It'll fail. God's word is his own word, and it cannot fail. And the word Jehovah Jireh means the Lord has provided for himself a sacrifice. Now, last night, did you enjoy that lesson on it last night? My son, Billy, which is in back of the building now, he goes back there to listen to see if he can hear it. He said it's very, very much mumbled up. <laughs> you know, you, you can't hear it good. So that's the reason instead of preaching, I just thought I would kind of talk on the word a while. And maybe you could hear a little better. See these armories like this, flat buildings wasn't made for meetings like this. They're for basketball and training. 
the ceiling's not made right, the acoustics are very, very poor. But we're thankful to the United States Army for the privilege of having a shelter over us tonight and to come into this place, and we thank them very kindly. Lord, ever bless them. Now, we took Abraham last night, and Abraham's seed after him. And oh, what a blessing we got to show, and to me, how could anyone have one room of doubt of any way? When you see what God promised, and then what God did, it's just like reading uh, the Bible, where it predicts something will happen, and then take history and see where it happened. Now, God said that he would bless this blessing and promise upon Abraham and his seed after him. And we find out just exactly each stage that God visited Abraham, he did the same thing to Abraham's seed after him. Then where did we find ourselves last night, brethren? We found ourselves at the very end of the road. Right down at the last thing and the church receiving its last sign. And then to bless it all, he came in among us last night and went throughout the audience and done the same thing he did at Sodom. Where could there be any slip up? Where could we be mistaken at? Then the night before that we'd taken Israel in the wilderness and showed just exactly what the church of Israel. Now we find out in 1 Corinthians the 10th chapter, it said that all those things happened to Israel for examples to us. Now we find out that they was examples. Showing what God did for them is just a shadow of what he does there. What he did natural, he's doing spiritual. You notice in the Bible, the twelfth chapter, the woman in the twelfth chapter of Revelation with the moon under her feet and the sun at her head, showing the law fading out. As soon as the sun rises, the moon goes down. The moon is a wife to the sun. Oh, I, I love that kind of Bible reading. See, the sun and the moon is a type of Christ and the church. When the sun goes down, out of sight, it's not down, it's just out of sight to the world, it reflects its light back to the moon to give light in its absence. So that's what Christ did when he went into glory. He reflects his light back on his church to give light until he returned. Beautiful. Oh, my, to think that the sun, if you want, reflecting its light on the, the moon, the show light and the light also, the moon itself is a watchdog. God set the boundaries of the sea and set the moon to watch it. And to see how angry it jumps at the bank. It'll like to destroy everything on the earth because it did one time, you know. And to see sin heaping, the, the waves beat those big waves against the bank. And remember, in the last days was predicted tidal waves. Sea roaring, man's heart failing, fear perplexed the nation, distress. That would be the end time signs. We went through all of that down along the road. Now here we are right up to the last sign to Abraham's children. And he even brought in the names of the messengers, just like it was in Abraham's time. To show there's no slip up nowhere. Bible, thus saith the Lord. And then the church sets dead. Ball games, attractions of the city, and the worldly things 
has the church all lured away. The Bible said to be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a farm of godliness, hotel rooms full of drunks, you can't even sleep. Sunday school teachers, people going to church, church members, having a little clean American fun. Sinful. Oh, this old world's a stagger like a drunk man coming home of the morning. What happened? When all these sins began to get like that in the days of Sodom, women half naked running through the rooms of the hotels and men drunk falling behind them. That aren't off somewhere else, that's here. And then what happens? God said, I've come down to find out whether all these reports are true. The true children cry out, come, Lord Jesus. Maybe one in a city. As we asked the other night, the Holy Spirit told us in the Bible, only seal those who sigh and cry for the abomination did in the city. Where would they be sealed? Where is the sealing of the people? Let's not be deceived. Let's be right. As the old darky said one time, I told the Lord I want to talk it over with him now because I didn't want any trouble at the river. And that's right, friends. I don't want any trouble at the river. You don't know what hour you're coming down to that river. You may be there in another 15 minutes. You may be there before daylight, but there's one thing sure, you're coming to it. So you better be sure now. God doesn't do these things just for play, for stage shows. He does this for His glory and His honor because He promised He'd do it. Let's not look at it lightly, but reverently, discreetly, and soberly. Come to the fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Confess your sins, your unbelief. Ask God to be merciful to you as a sinner. And save you for Christ's sake. Sometimes people get in church and say, I don't have to ask that. I've already all oh, search your life out, friend. See how your faith is recorded uh, with the Word. Remember, those Pharisees didn't think they need saving. They were holy, consecrated men. They were ministers, their fathers as ministers, their grandfathers, their great grandfathers, their great great grandfathers, all of them as ministers. Live such a life with one mark against them they could be stoned for. Know the scriptures perfectly known. And Jesus said, You are of your father the devil. Watch God. He was showing them the sign of the Messiah. And they didn't believe it. They said he's Beel's above a fortune teller. As smart and as educated and as consecrated lives as they were living. And yet they were sinners. Why? They didn't commit adultery. They didn't smoke cigarettes. They didn't get drunk. They didn't go to dances. They didn't play cards. But they disbelieved. That's the reason they were sinners. That's the reason I sling it at Pentecost today. No matter how much you dance in the Spirit and speak in tongues, I believe in that. But you could speak in tongues like pouring peas on a dry cowhide. And still lost. Right? Never even got the... I've seen witch doctors speak in tongues and dance in the Spirit. Drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil. Dancing in the Spirit and speaking in tongues and shouting as hard as they can shout. Certainly. Can't go over that. If you still disbelieve God's Word just the way it's written, you're an unbeliever, a sinner. God comes down and performs His Word and makes it manifest and shows it letter by letter where nobody can rise against it. God stands for it Himself. Then they walk away because of some creed, no wonder we're doomed. But can you stop it? Somebody said to me today, can you stop it? I said, no, sir. He said, well, what do you, won't you keep still? I said, how can I keep still? I'm coming to a judgment. My voice will be on a recording there that will scrape the whole generation. I can't keep still. 
Woe unto me if I do keep still. God, I said, you don't believe in sinning, do you? He said, no. I said, well, what, what you preaching against it for? Why you, if, if you know the world's going to go on in that chaos, why you keep on preaching? We've got to give a voice against it. Got to. Truth has got to be known. God's just, he gives his warning. Why did Noah stand in the door preaching when he knew they wasn't coming in? He prepared the ark for the saving of his household. That's what it was. But he had to give the message just the same. God's just. God knew they wasn't coming. He knew just exactly eight souls would be saved in the days of Noah, just as the last saves he knows this generation. He knows who will and who won't. But he, he knows it was. That's true. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. See? We know we're living in a tremendous time, but you, your duty... Your, your heart cries out. You can't hold your peace. you got to sing it. Now, watch what he did to Abraham, showing to his seed. Then you'll have an understanding that these things are not to go to the big nerve centers. The, the people here, most of the people that I meet are looking for some great, big, wide, world-sweeping revival. That's done past. We're at the end. You're looking for great miracles and signs just because they don't know the Bible. That's the two prophets of Revelation 11 is going to stop the sun, Elisha, and, uh, or Moses and Elijah. That's that the Gentile church is done gone. That's right. See, that's over in the Jewish when God turns again to Israel. This church age, read Revelations 1 to 3 and then you'll have it. You see what he gives to the church age, the calling out. The last sign was the appearing of Elisha again on the scene at the last end time. And we, we are know that, that everything that he said will be just the way he said it. Now, we find out that where he called him in the third and the twelfth chapter of Genesis and justified him by faith because Abraham believed God. Is that right? Now, I don't say this now, I don't want you to quote this back out among your people, but you see, everything in the Bible travels in three. A three making one. Now, like in the, the Bible, it is written in here that, you know, God wrote three Bibles. Do you believe that? He wrote one in the sky, one in the pyramid. The other one on paper. Now, we know that they make a Ouija board out of the pyramid. They make a Ouija board out of the Zodiac. They make a Ouija board out of the Bible. But that don't hinder its truths. Its truths are just exactly the same. Now, if you notice in the Zodiac, what's the first figure in the Zodiac? It's the Virgin. What's the last figure in the Zodiac? Leo the Lion. The first coming and the second coming of Christ. He comes first by the virgin, comes the next, the line of the tribe of Judah. Then the cross fishes, the cancer age that we're now in just before that time takes place. We watch the pyramid. It was built like this. But you notice the headstone never was put on the pyramid. Did you ever think of that? You got a dollar bill in your pocket? Look what it says, the great seal, the pyramid, and look above it, the stone. The headstone never was found. Why? Wow. The headstone was rejected. Christ. Look down here in the age of Luther. Justification. Plenty of room in here just to confess Christ. And have your head chopped off. When they come out of paganism. They have your head. You'd be executed for the very witness of saying he's a Christian. Luther. Then what did it do? It heaps up now to the minority, coming down closer. What was next? Sanctification. Then he's called a fanatic. Holy roller or something. That's Wesley's age. What happened next? Then come the Pentecostal, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The still the church got smaller in the minority. And now it goes on till that has to get to such a perfect place until when that headstone finally comes, it'll fit so perfect, the church will be, have to be in such a, such a perfect shape until when Christ comes, he fits right into it. 
Right? So you see, just speaking in tongues and dancing in the Spirit, that's way down the line here yet. The church, and remember, if you was ever there, in Egypt, if the seats are the pyramid, them stones way out in the air, weighing hundreds of tons, and so perfectly put together to a razor blade, won't even a home to a perfect condition till it fits absolutely perfect without semen. That's the way the church is gonna to have to be so honed down. The word honing the church until when Christ comes to take the church, the ministry of the church will pit right up on it and will raise Luther, Wesley, Pentecostal and all and go up with it. That's right to take the church up. Now when we find out in justification what he done to the seed or to Abraham was beginning with Luther. Sanctification, the fifteenth chapter when he confirmed the covenant by blood. Seventeenth chapter he gave the Holy Ghost, the Pentecostal age, because you see all those other elements was something outside of what the church received from him, what Abraham received from him. But when he said, I am El Shaddai, the breast, inviting Abraham to come nurse his strength from the breast of God, draw in the life of God into himself. That's when the church got the Holy Ghost, when it tasted of the, the life of God, when it drawed into itself the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then what did he do? Just scriptural as we proved it last night, taking that same power, God cannot defy his own laws. That's the reason he took his own son in 17th chapter of Matthew and took him up on Mount Transfiguration and positionally placed him as his law was. He did it. And then when he did that, then we find out he followed his own laws and here he took Abraham the same way. And you say, are you sure that, Brother Bram, the fourth and fifth verse? Yes, sir. See, when he gave Abraham part of his name, positionally put his name on the check the same as his was. His is Elohim, Abraham. He gave him part of his own name. It's a great revelation there. And you realize I can run that farther than that, but the church would ought to be taking strong meat and still drinking milk. Right. So he gave him his own name. Abraham. And then when he did that, the next thing he did after he gave him that name, placed that on his name, then what did he do? He gave him a sign that he was ready to absolutely destroy all sin that was around him. And positionally put his body in condition to receive the promised son that he had waited on. Exactly what he's done to the church. What was the last sign he gave Abraham? Had his back turned to the tent. And told Sarah what she was doing and thinking inside the tent. And Jesus, the true seed of Abraham, the real true prophet, the God prophet, that came to the earth and manifested the same to the ending up of the Jews. Think of it. When he came to the earth, what did he do? He said to Simon, your name is Simon. You're the son of Jonas, a man who couldn't write his own name. And Simon recognized quickly by the teaching of his father that the Messiah would have a sign like that. And he recognized him and received him. Philip, as soon as he saw it, run told Nathaniel, and Nathaniel come around the bank with him and got up there where Jesus was, and Jesus looked at him and said, You are an Israelite in whom there's no God. He said, When did you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you. When you were under the tree, I saw you. And what did that real, elected, predestinated Son of God say? Rabbi! You're the Son of God. You're the King of Israel. 
said, Blessed art thou. Then he goes down to a, a woman in Samaria because the Samaritans were looking for a, you know, they were looking for a Messiah. Anybody's looking for a Messiah, he'll come. If you're here looking for him tonight, he'll meet you. But if you're not looking for him, he, 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 he's not looking for you either. If you're not looking for him, he'll never come to you. But the Samaritans was looking. Now, there's only three races of people on earth. Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. The whole breed come from all that. And now, notice Peter with the keys to prove that now. Peter with the keys of the kingdom. How many believe God gave him the keys? Jesus did. Sure he did. And when did he use them? In Acts 2 to the Jews. They went right down to the Samaritans, although Philip had went down and baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, but they had not received the Holy Ghost as yet because Peter had the key. Come down, laid his hands upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And then, next, what's the next generation? The next class? The Gentiles. And he went up and opened the gospel to the Gentiles. And from that, there was no more need of Simon Peter's keys because it already opened to all the world. Now, the Gentiles wasn't looking for no Messiah, but the Jews and Samaritans was. How did he declare himself? The same thing that he did at Sodom. What did he do to the Samaritans? When the woman come out, the woman with the prostitute came to the well, or the woman living in adultery, she had six husbands, five she'd got rid of and lived with one man. And she came to the well to get water, and Jesus saw her and he said, Woman, bring me a drink. She said, you have, not customary. We are got a segregation around here. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. We, you shouldn't ask me such a thing as that. We don't have no dealings with one another. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And the conversation went on until he contacted her spirit. Then he said he found what she wanted. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, you said the truth. Or you've had five, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. She said, Sir, listen to this woman. Now, this is the Samaritan. Said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now, we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. That was to be the sign of the Messiah. And Jesus said, I'm he that speaks with you. And what did she do? She got the water pot and ran into the city and said, Come see a man that told me the things that I have done. Isn't this the very Messiah? And the Bible said the man of the city believed Jesus to be the Messiah because he had told the woman the things that she had done. Now you produced one time he did that to a Gentile. He never. But Jesus said when the Gentiles or the, the, the Pharisees and the preachers of that day said he was of the wrong spirit doing that, that his gospel wasn't true because they, he was tearing down their churches, their organizations, calling them generation of vipers and everything else, foxes and everything that he could think of. He was really splitting them open. But yet he said, if I do not the works of my father, don't believe me. But if I do the works of my Father, then believe the works. That's true of any man. God doesn't back his ministry up, and it's not God's ministry. Notice then, this woman, she said, come see this man. And the and people of Samaria believed. On, he never did one more time. He just did it that one time. But the woman was told a man that Jesus did it second-handedly through the woman. The whole city believed on Jesus. Because of that one miracle, I wonder what's going to happen to America. That prostitute will stand in the judgment and condemn tens of millions of church members in the judgment. Because not only once, but thousands, times, thousands of times it's happened. 
across the country, around the world, examined by science. Every critic he could go through went through and still come out 100% pure. The Holy Spirit, the Word backing it up. Where are we going to stand, brethren, at that day? Just think it over, and that may be before morning. We were at the end. I'll get more in that tomorrow. Notice, he placed him, give him the sign, what he was. And remember, it was God Almighty. It wasn't the man. That was just human flesh there. Disappeared just a little bit. But it was God making himself known to the elected, called out, separated church. Remember, not an organized town, not a city, but a group that was wandering in the desert, taking the way with the Lord's despised few. Like always, God's had to call His children into the wilderness and away from these things. Call Him, showed that sign to Him, and moved on, and Abraham believed that immediately he was changed. When that angel left the scene, Abraham had a changed body and made ready in the sun and come that had been promised. One of these days, the old-fashioned gospel that you hear will be silenced one of these days, and the church will receive a body glorified You'll have to have that kind of body to go up and meet him in the air. We can't go in this kind of a body. So those who are looking, those who are listening, those who are taking heed is the ones that will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. The expected Son of God that we've looked for since we can recognize that we were Christians. Remember, we proved that last night, how he went down to Berea, how that Sarah, an old woman, a hundred years old, used to get a letter or two off of that, saying, well, they just live longer lives. But I want you to notice the 18th chapter and the 17th chapter also. The Bible said they were well stricken in years, stooped, bent down, old. And when they got down there, Amalek, that king looking for a sweetheart with all those Philistine, beautiful women, and yet fell in love with this real old, old, old great-great-grandmother and would have took her for a wife. But God protected her. I want you to notice, here's something, sister. Do you know Sarah loved Abraham so much to she that beautiful woman till she called him her Lord. Which Paul later says, whose daughters you are as long as you obey the truth. Sarah didn't dress in the fashions of the day like Miss Lot did. She was probably the head leader of all the societies there was down there. Her husband was mayor of the city. So I suppose she is and their big church of a morning when the bells rang and they all went out there, I imagine she was a pretty well-known woman. She didn't want to leave that. She was earthbound. That's the way people today don't want to hear about the coming of the Lord Jesus. Why, well, it's the most glorious thing I can think of for him to split the skies right now. Let's get over it. Why would I change this old, dried-up, wrinkled, old age, creeped over body that's full of corruption? Nothing but skin worms can eat it up. And take this soul in there that loves God and unite in a brand new 21-year-old William Branham that'll never be old and never, never have a heartache or never die, never be sick, to live with the elect to the ages throughout all eternity? Well, I couldn't think of anything any greater. That's why I want you to read this witness here, this little thing. I saw it. I know it's the truth. I shook hands there and... And with people who were, and I knowed. And I, I was standing, look at myself, laying there on the bed, and here I was standing, it ain't very far away, we won't have very far to go. Because I was standing here just as real as I'm standing at this pulpit. 
And I thought, now here, there I am, laying there, how could I be standing here just the same as I am right now? There was people, every one of them, beautiful. I can see those women. I've been kind of hard on the women, but I don't, I don't mean you Christian women. I mean those who act like they're Christians and not. Think. Wants to be Jezebel. No, sir. After the things of the world. I certainly bear down on them, and I, I just, I have to do that. I can't help that. But you have to have a bad one to make a good one shine out. You have to have a night to appreciate the daylight. You have to have wrong to appreciate the right. It's all working together to God's good and His glory. You're on a battlefield, not a picnic ground. Battle! Everybody say, come be a Christian, everything will go right. No, sir, it doesn't for a Christian. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You got to be laughed at, made fun of, stomped at, kicked at, made fun of. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will he call them of his disciples? I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I've started in with Jesus. Oh, Lord, take me through. That's right. That's my, that's my, that's my alternative, is to go through. If I only look down tonight and look here in this city, look for the last three months where I've been across the nation and see the falling away of the churches, the indifference of the pastors, see the indifference amongst the people who come out, look like fish and loaves, and, and the first little thing got enough temper to fight a buzzsaw, and indifferent, nasty, the Pentecostal people. Ministerial Association want to draw me out of a ring just because I let a man on the platform that wasn't baptized the way they thought he ought to be baptized. And, and they all such indifference. If I was looking right here, I, I'd give up. I'm glad God got a hold of me before the church did. <laughs> uh, I found out about God. That's right. Found out that God was real. Mr. Baxter once, Ern Baxter, used to managed the campaigns for him. He said up in Canada, they were, one time there's a contest to win a new Schwinn bicycle. They had a board that was a foot wide. They had to ride it for 50 or 100 yards, sitting about three foot in the air. And every one of them there were champions. Ern said I could go downtown, get my mother's groceries, put them under my arms and come through the streetcars, up around the cars and never touch my handlebars. Said I could ride. Set backwards on it, ride the same as a good father. Said it didn't make any difference to me. And nearly all of them are champions. And they were sure they was going to win that swing bicycle. And they had one little sissy fellow among them. He wasn't too good a rider. And they know he wasn't going to win. But when they put them all on the track and started them out, every one of them fell off of this one little sissy boy. And he rode her out to the end, got off, received the reward, took the bicycles, and all the fellows got around and said, Tell us how you done it. I said, boys, I'm going to tell you where you made your mistake. I said, I thought it all out before I got on there. That's a good idea. He said, you see, you all were trying like this to keep the bicycle on the board, looking right down like this at your bicycle. It made you nervous. You got to wiggling, you fell off. And I seen where you made your mistakes. He said, I never looked what was down here. I just watched the end and kept steady. That's it. That's it. Watch the end and keep steady. Just keep moving on. I'd be discouraged tonight. If it wasn't for that, I'm watching the end. Just keep in steady. Move on. No matter what takes place, just keep, don't look at that. Just keep looking at the end. That's where you meet God down there at the end. That's where the rewards are given out. Don't drop off here. Go on to the end. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Scripture. Now, we find out then that the confirmation of, the, of Abraham give and everything turned out just exactly now. Now watch one law that God given his church, not one, not one thing did he promise Abraham, not one thing did he do to Abraham, but what he's done to or give to the church except one thing, the change of the body. And when he does that, now remember, Sarah had to be changed. How many believe that? Raise up your hand. She had to have a changed body. She's a hundred years old. How could she give birth to a child? Abraham, well, the Bible said as a man, he would 
his body had been dead for many years. Read Romans, the fourth chapter, where it said, Abraham considered not his own body now as good as dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God. He kept moving on. Now, his body was unfertile, sterile, a hundred years old, and dead, sexually. Sarah's womb was dead, unfertile, milk veins gone, breast gone, and heart at a hundred-year-old woman to go in labor. See, there was, it, she was just as good as dead. But then she could not have that baby, could not receive that promise unless she was changed. Now, what are you trying to say, Brother Branham? Listen close. We cannot, in these kind of bodies, ever receive the promised son. For he's not coming to the earth. We are to be caught up. Our bodies are to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And we're to be caught up to meet him in the air. And the last sign was given before the destruction was that the angel showing that God would be dwelling in mortal human flesh, performing that same sign before our bodies were changed. And that's the last sign the church gets. Show me one thing more that God did to Abraham. Show me one more sign he gave him than that sign there. That was the last sign. All that knows that Bible readers say amen. amen. That's the last sign was given. This is the last sign. Church, hear me in the name of the Lord. Look at my education, my insufficiency of preaching, not holding my subject and speaking like anointed or educated preachers really speak. Don't you listen to that. You listen to what I'm telling you, the Word of God. God's behind it because he's proven the word that's being preached. If you can't believe me, you say, well, Brother Bram, don't belong to our organization. Well, believe the word, Sam. Let the organization go. And believe the works. Take it to your own organization. Get them to believe it. You can do a better job then than I can. Or you can beat God doing it. God can't do it himself. Notice, the 18th chapter is where he done this. The 17th chapter now, he gave him strength for the miracle. Give him the Holy Ghost, in other words. Let him draw his, God's own life into his own. Now, what do we do when we receive the Holy Ghost? We take God's life into ours. Is that right? What we blend God's life in ours. We're sons of God because we draw from God the Holy Spirit that makes us sons of God. What does that do? It gets us ready then for the change. <laughs> Brother, it makes us ready for the change that's fixing to come. Spirit filled. Just lean right on his bosom and keep drawing. Then we get changed one of these days. That right away, too. I can promise that. The promised son is on his way. Now notice, immediately after that, Sarah become pregnant, and she knew she was going to have this baby. Now she's young, now beautiful. Even a king fell in love with her. She'd have to be outstanding, or that king would never have fell in love with her, you know. She's a beautiful woman. I wanted to marry her, and, and God protect her. One more thing I want to get to the church. Now, some of you sitting here, last night when the anointing struck me, I could feel them little flares in there. I've been trying to think of it. I jotted it down here so I wouldn't forget it. I caught that last night. That you think, well, I, I did so-and-so. I did so-and-so. Many times I find people won't even come in the prayer line. They won't even take their number when they're called. They're afraid that'll be called up certain things. Now, I used to blast that right out. 
You all know that. And not unless I'm actually led to do it, I don't do it no more. Now, you will make your mistakes. You say, Brother Branham, no matter what I'd ever do, I'd never be worthy. That's right. But look, you say, Brother Branham, at one time, I didn't believe this message. That's right. I, I guess many of them didn't. I wouldn't have done it, I guess, myself. I couldn't have done it unless God revealed it to me. You, you, that's, it's a revelation. The whole church is built on revelation. Without the revelation, you'll never see it. You're blind. Jesus, the Bible said, I believe Matthew 12, I believe it was, where he said, though Jesus had done so many miracles before them, yet they could not believe because Isaiah said they got eyes and can't see, ears and can't hear. And very, really holy people, the very cream of holiness. So holiness is not all. Holy living is not all. Faith is the main thing. Now, Listen, church, I want to drop this in here because I believe the Holy Spirit told me to do it. You may be sitting there, which some of you are, I know you are, disagreeing with me right now. Now, I can call your name if you want me to. So, I know that, but I also can see farther than that that you're going to believe it one of these days. So, I'm just going to put this in so you'll understand so I can give you a little spot of grace here. It ain't going to be too long till you're going to change your mind. Some of you, some of you won't. But remember, when Sarah first heard that man, which she is a type of the church, when she heard that, seen that sign take place to Abraham, she actually laughed about it in her heart. And she disbelieved and doubted it ever being so. Is that right? At that time, God would have rubbed her name off. Is that right? But he couldn't. She's part of Abraham. They are one. And if you've really not been excited, not worked up in emotion, not got some church creed, but really received the Holy Ghost, and you're really part of Christ, and still a little skeptic in your mind, God will not shove you off the map because he can't. You're a part of Christ. He'll bring you to the truth. Now, if you have never, you just, you might have spoken tongues, danced in the Spirit, and done all these things there, that, that don't mean you got the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, my. That's a million miles from it. Jesus never did say, now remember, I believe that when you receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues. Right. But Jesus never did, there's no scripture in the Bible that says that that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. I want you to produce it if it is. There's no such scripture as that. Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. And the fruit of the Spirit is not speaking in tongues. That's a gift of the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost has come, that's one of the gifts that goes with it. It's preaching, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, all those things are gifts of the Holy Ghost. They was amazed at the day of Pentecost. Peter said, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See? Now, but remember, I believe that when you get so full of the Holy Ghost, you, you, the Bible said, stammering lips and other tongues while I speak to these people. Stammering. So full of the Holy Ghost, you can't say nothing in your own language. That's when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I believe that when you believe on God... With all your heart and accept Jesus as your Savior, you've got a portion of that Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life. And there's only one form of eternal life. Then you're just a child. Then you begin to walk into the fullness of the Spirit. You grow in grace. Then you're Wesley and now into Pentecost, the same thing. Then the placing of the Son. Then the last sign gift. Then the rapture of the body, the change of the body and the rapture. Now when they come back, Sarah recognized she was to be mother. Oh, she must have been a happy little lady. I can see her now, that black, shiny hair, those big velvet eyes, pretty face. She was a young woman then, probably in her early 20s. 
Abraham, strong and healthy, young man, changed from an old, broke-down fellow to a young man showing what he's going to do to all the seed of Abraham. Exactly. And then the first thing you know, they could be, live like young people. Then they brought forth this young child. And when he was about 12 years old, God said, Now, to make this real sure to all the people, I'm going to prove to them what I'm going to do. Show that the seed of Abraham will never doubt my word. The true seed of Abraham won't doubt my word. Now, here's a way to test whether you're really the seed of Abraham or not. When the church says, you believe that and I'll kick you out, that don't mean a thing to the seed of Abraham. <laughs> not a thing. That just puts him on his road right. <laughs> that just sets him free. Here he goes. And uh, see that he was, he was to be the father of nations. Now God said, I want you to take this boy of yours, and I'm going to show you in a vision what kind of a looking hill you're going to a mountain, and you take that boy up there and simply destroy him. Could you imagine what slipped through Abraham's mind as a human up here? Up here, well, how am I going to be the father of nations? And here I've waited all these years and got this boy here, and here he is, 12 years old. He takes me out now and says, take him out and kill him. How? And he promised me that through this same boy, this is the boy he promised me, through Sarah. And if, if I had this boy here, he'd be the father of nations, now he takes me out to kill it. That's when the intellectuals begin to work. But the little buzzer kept saying, what did you believe 25 years for him? <laughs> that little buzzer said, well, then he'd come up in the, the stroke and make a confession. I received him as one from the dead. I'm fully persuaded that God's able to raise him up from the dead. <laughs> That's it. When this goes to talking down here, this shuts up. As I said the other night, in the Garden of Eden, the devil chose a part of a man and God chose a part. God chose his heart. The devil chose his intellects. And now the day the church today depends everything upon the intellect, never thinking of the heart. See? And the only thing they can see, well, I just can't see it that way. You don't see with your eyes anyhow. You look with your eyes, you see with your heart. You look at it and they say, I just don't see it. You're looking at it, but you don't see it. It means you don't understand it. Your understanding comes from your heart. Now, here he is now. He doesn't, he doesn't understand it with his mind. How is he going to do it? His intellects are telling that. That's his reasonings. But the Bible said we cast down reasonings. Cast them away from us. Say, how am I going to get well when the doctor says when I've done this? I don't have one thing to do with it. You get about one out of every 500 that really believes that. Sets right straight there and there's nothing in the world ever changing. But what do we have to do? Call through everything till we find that one. That's right. God searches through the earth to find one man. Oh God, when I think of that, it makes my heart burn. God is searching the earth to try to find one man that will surrender to him. He's always done it. He found one man in the day of Noah. Out of the tens of millions and millions. People want to shrink just like there's too many people like Samson today. Samson gave God his strength, but he wouldn't give him his heart. God could use his strength, but not his heart. Samson was somewhat a ladies' man, you know, and he just couldn't give him his heart. He had to give that to Deliah. But he gave his strength to God. God used his strength, but he couldn't use his heart. So many today. God, you'll give your intellectuals to God. I'll build you a big house. I'll make you an organization. I'll do this. I'll do that. Don't you realize that's the same thing Cain did? He was rejected. Cain built himself an altar and made a sacrifice and said, here it is. I worship you. I believe you. There's my sacrifice. There's my altar. Take it or leave it. That's the man today, the religious man. Esau the same way. And the church the same way. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. It ain't what you've done, it's what he done. Give him your heart and follow him. Trying to find the man that will follow him. He had one man, Abraham. He was that perfect man. Whatever God said, that was all right. So watch. Could you imagine how Abraham couldn't tell Sarah, the wife, that pretty little Jewish boy, about 12 years old, go take him up and cut his throat? That would have been a horrible thing to tell Mama. He couldn't tell her. So the next morning he got up and chopped some wood. He said he clave the wood, which means chopped it. 
put it in a sack of some sort, some kind of a skin sack, laid it on the back of the mule and called two servants and said, Isaac, <coughs> you and I are going to worship. Let's take the mules along. Mommy, we'll be back in a few days. All right. He goes on. Up towards the mountains he goes. And remember, he went three days' journey. Is that right? Three days. Now, ordinary man, just any man, and him young, probably 20 years old, 25. When I used to patrol, I walked 32 miles every day through the jungles. And we were used to riding all the time. All the man done that was transportation, either riding a mule or, or, or walking. So I can walk, I could eventually say in the mountains he walked at least 20 miles a day. Well, after he walked three days back, then he lifted up his eyes and saw the mountain that he saw in the vision far off. Then got to it. Watch where he was now from civilization. I love this. This is so beautiful. Don't miss it. When they got to the mountain, Abraham said to the, the boys that was holding the mules, he said, you stay here. Watch the mule. The lad and I, we're going yonder to worship, and the lad and I will return. How are you going to say that, Abraham, when you're going there to kill that boy? What is it? That's that faith. He doesn't know how it's going to happen, but he knows it's going to happen. <laughs> oh. You say, Brother Bram, you act silly up there. Well, maybe I do, but I'm feeling awful good. <laughs> I feel better this way than I did in the old carnal intellectual, so I'd rather stay this way. You boys wait here with the mules. The lad and I are going down to worship, and we will return. What if the angels stood there and say, Abraham? Or what if the devil stood over on one side? said, Abraham, you told a lie. Oh, no. There's something down here that tells me if I even have to kill him, I'll receive him as one from the dead. God can raise him back to earth. The lad and I will return because why? God already told me that through this lad would be the seed that would save nations. And he changed my name and put H-A-M on the end of my name. And I'm a father of nations through this lad, and I don't know what God's going to do there, but he's going to do it. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my! That puts fire! That gives you something to stand on! That's not one of these Catholic Santa Claus stories. Of some fictitious something that never happened. That's, Thus saith the Lord God Jehovah. Amen. Makes you no know, difference how we're coming back, we're coming back. That's all. How, now, if you'd say to, uh, here's a man sitting here with a cane, blind. How are you going to receive your sight, sir? <laughs> Just let God speak to his heart one time and watch what happens. Maybe there's one over there with a cancer dying. One back here with heart trouble. Just had an examination. The doctor said, can't live, go die. <laughs> Let that little buzzer whirl down here at one time. <laughs> I'm the Lord that heals thee, gives thee thy sight, takes away the cancer, makes thee to walk. <laughs> it's all over. I don't care what any scientific, what anything, no matter if the doctor put a, uh, give him a cardiogram and told him his heart had already stopped, he'd still be believing it. Yes, sir. He's going to do it anyhow. There's nothing can stop it. That's, that's what faith is. You know what? Forgive me, brethren, sisters. I don't know why I'm going to say this, but it, it's choking me to say it. I know something's fixing to happen to me, so I'm, I'm as unloading. <laughs> that's right. Glory to God. Brother. I have seen so much make-believe, super-duper American so-called faith that it makes me sick at my stomach. 
evangelists running people through lines and saying, who feel it? How are you going to do that? I got a letter from Germany the other day of a German Lutheran minister, the head of the association in Germany, <clears throat> in a certain district, where an evangelist was. And he called this evangelist's attention to it. Said the thing that you done was beat the people for money. And it'd be better if you Americans stayed out of here. And that's right. That's right, I'm agreeing with you. Said, what about little Deborah Statcliffe up there if you say all this super duper face for everything? I've got the letter right on file. Anything I say from here, brother, I can back it up. He said, all this sheer faith that you was talking about having, why'd you all do all that shaking and jumping and everything else there trying to tell people they were healed and they did this and did that when they wasn't? You never brought any repentance? Say, why didn't you wait like Brother Branham did when they called him about little Deborah Statcliffe? He waited till he got a clean cut answer from God. There you are! Wait till you hear it, thus saith the Lord. Clean up your lies. Get away from your unbelief. Quit having this super dues for I feel, I touch, I got blood, I got oh. No wonder the thing's Satan. It's got to come back to God's Bible. Repentance from unbelief, not super duper clap hands and work up and a lot of emotion. Pentecostals birth places in that. These days shake them and say, say it, 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 till they say it some kind of an unknown tongue or get a confusion and say you got the Holy Ghost and live any kind of a life with enough unbelief in them and smear the devil's hell out. <laughs> Super duper faith. <laughs> What's the matter with me anyhow? I'm only telling you the truth. Someday you'll catch it. Someday you'll know that I've told you the truth. My voice may be silent. You, you might, might be able to silence the body that's speaking, but you'll never silence that voice. It comes from God. They stoned Stephen, but they couldn't stop his message. It'll move on. And tapes will be played after I'm gone for years. Yes, super duper faith. American, built up under a lot of flusteration. Painted face, women wearing shorts and everything else running through the lines and shaking them, hollering, Yeah, you got it, hallelujah, you. Oh, nonsense. Repent! Come back to God! We need to clean it up! Amen. Don't think I'm angry. I'm not angry. If I was, I'd get down there to order and repent before I finish this message. I'm only telling you something in my heart, boiling out, and it's the Word of God. You need a cleaning from the pulpit to the basement, throughout, super duper faith. No such a thing with God. God's faith is pure, clean, cut, unadulterated. That's right. Something inside moving, say, I accept it. Brother, you know where you're at, then. You're not long ago way down there in Kentucky, Brother Sullivan. An old patch blue shirt, steel gray eyes, looked at me in the eyes and said, Preacher, I believe that old brother. <laughs> that was 100% plus. He did. <laughs> and a cancer hanging on the side of his face dropped off on the floor. <laughs> he believed it. So many's got hope instead of faith. Now the newspapers packed the article of it. A reporter standing there and the cancer rolled off over his feet. He couldn't keep him writing about it. Picked it up himself. Say, why don't... I didn't see it nowhere. Jesus said, sit you tell no man. We got so much publicity today to fix up something before the public to make it... Oh, I better shut up. Go ahead. Notice. But that's thus saith the law. Abraham took the little fella. Watch. 
put the wood upon Isaac's back. Type of Christ with the wood on his back. Up the mountain they went, on up. Got up and past the timber lines. Got on up amongst the big rocks. Way on up to the big boulders, to the bleached sands. On up in the top of the mountain. Weren't up with just old vines and things wrapped around the stumps or the rocks. He rolled himself twelve stones together and laid the wood down, tucked the fire, and lit the sacrifice, lit the altar. Little Isaac got suspicious. He said, my father, he said, here am I, my son. He said, here is the altar, here is the wood, here's the fire, but where is the lamb or the sacrifice? He said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for this sacrifice. There you are. Only thing I'm doing is just following instructions. It's up to God to provide the lamb. How am I going to receive my sight? How am I going to... That isn't a question. Just follow the instructions. Believing without failure. God will provide for himself a lamb for this sacrifice. Then he said, Isaac, put your hands behind you. He took a string and began to tie his hands. Isaac knew then. Watch his obedience like Jesus, the true son of God. Obedience unto death. Took the cross. Tied his hands and his feet. Abraham lifted up the little boy and laid him up on the rock. I can imagine him standing there and trying to, his intellectuals trying to go to work. What are you going to tell Sarah when he get home? I, 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 but the little buzzer kept saying, I'm Jehovah. I will provide. You just follow me. See, two things working. Same time. What are you going to listen to? If you listen to this, you're gone. Listen to this, you can't go. You've got to be sure. Here. It's perfect. Now, pull his hair back out of his face, tuck his head, laid it back so the throat would be empty, open up his little shirt and pull it back so his throat would be. So lay your head back a little farther, honey, for daddy. You think that was easy? There had to be something down here moving. A real love that wouldn't fail. Laid his head back, tuck the big knife out like that, his razor home sharp. Pull his head back, tuck it out, lift up to God, caught the top of his hair, held it back like that, and raised his hand. About that time, the Holy Ghost grabbed his hand. Just stay your hand, Abraham. I know you love me. And about that time, a ram bladed behind him. It wasn't there a second before. A ram had his horns hooked in the vines. Caught in the vine. There. Abraham looked around, went and got the ram, laid it up on the altar, tied it with the string that Isaac was tied with, and killed the ram. I want to ask you something. Where did that ram come from? It was at least a hundred miles from civilization amongst lions, jackals, all kind, everything eats a sheep, wild dogs. And again, it was way up on the mountain where there's no food or water. And it wasn't there when Abraham was hunting the stones around to make the altar, but there it was. <laughs> oh, God. Jehovah Jireh. He had provided himself a lamb for that sacrifice, and he's the same Jehovah Jireh tonight. Only thing is that to the seed now of Abraham, he has already provided the lamb. The lamb has already been killed. A bleeding lamb. Now that wasn't a vision Abraham saw because the ram bled and a vision don't bleed. See? He killed the ram. God spoke it into existence and Abraham took it out of existence and in less than a minute's time come into existence and went out the next minute because God had a reason for it because he had brought somebody to that place testing him. The Bible said Abraham was tested. And the seed of Abraham is tested. Now God was testing his servant. And he's able to provide or make anything any way he wants to because he's Jehovah Jireh. Now if you're sick, afflicted, well no matter what's wrong with you, 
if God has revealed it to you that you're going to be, that you are healed already by his provided lamb, and the doctor says you can't get well, he's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is able to provide you some eyes. I've seen him do it. The Lord can provide you ears. The Lord can provide you health. The Lord can provide you strength. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord provided sacrifice. And in Jesus Christ, God's Son, all this is met for you, the seed of Abraham, if you'll only believe like Abraham did. Do you do it? Let us bow our heads then. Are you sick? You need him? Jehovah Jireh is present. The same one who promised all the things, giving all the signs, fulfilling all his word, is here in this armory in Middletown, Ohio, tonight. If you have need of him, just raise up your hand. I keep him on your mind while I pray. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of your provided sacrifice that I accepted as my Savior. And he changed this wicked, cruel, Irish heart of mine. Laying there on the bed with just three minutes to live by the specialist. My heart only beating 17 times to the minute. But Jehovah Jireh came on the scene. And that's been about 35 years ago when I had three minutes to live. But Jehovah Jireh provided me life. Why shouldn't I spend it then for him? There may be others here tonight, Lord, no doubt. Maybe not that bad. But I promise you, there on that hospital bed, I'd never be ashamed of you. I'd stand for your word. I'd scream it from the housetop street corner. And for 31 years, I have screamed it, Lord. Now thy servant is getting old. I pray thee, Lord, that you'll bless this people tonight. And we'll let them see this gospel truth. As the songwriter said, it's grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It was Jehovah Jireh. That's brought me safe thus far, and he will take me on. Give me faith tonight as I pray for the sick. Help me, Lord, and give the people faith to believe. Now, there's nothing, Lord, I've told them over and over. There's nothing in me or any other man that can do what you've already done. Their healing is completed. You redeem them from their sickness when you died for them. You was wounded for their transgressions. With your stripes, they were healed. May they have faith tonight, Lord. Not trust upon some merit of some emotion they had or some sensation or something. But may they come with simple, clear-cut faith and clear-cut decision. Tonight, I accept Christ as my healer. From my heart, I believe he heals me. Grant it, Lord, and it'll all be over. Grant it, Father, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. What time are we supposed to be out? Any smart time? If you all will just be real reverent for just a few minutes. I don't believe we've had any prayer line called up yet, have we? We haven't called a prayer line since we've been here. Just had from the from the, from the platform. Was that the way it was?
What was that prayer card? The A? One to a hundred? Would you rather just be called from the altar here? People without prayer cards? Be called like that? Or people with them? Doesn't matter to me. Whatever way will bring you the most faith. If you just have faith and belief, don't doubt. And it'll just keep real reverence, that quiet. Now this is the time, no matter how much I've preached, if it isn't the truth, it isn't the truth. God will never witness to a lie, you know that. But if it is the truth, God's obligated to witness to that. Now, my brethren and sisters, will you just kindly just keep as reverent as you can? Let's call a few of those cards. If we don't get them tonight at all, we'll get them tomorrow. Let's take just about a, a dozen or something like that on the platform. And then let the Holy Spirit, if it will, start in the audience. How many out there doesn't have a prayer card and you're sick? Raise up your hands. All right. Oh. How many has prayer cards then raise up your hand? There's more without prayer cards than just a few with prayer cards. Probably some of them last night got the prayer cards left. What did you give from 1 to 50 or from 1, one to 100 last night? Let's start from, say, 75. How would that be? See if it's here. Prayer card number 75. Who has that? Raise up your hand. No? Well, we'll start from somewhere else. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Number 75. How about you coming right here, lady? Number 76. Who has that? 76. That lady? Come right here. 77. Prayer card 77. Back there. 78. Come here. 79. 79. Did I see it? Did it raise up? 79. 80. Who has prayer card 80? Would you raise your hand so we can see? 80. Now when the boy comes to give the prayer cards, he stands up before you, shuffles them up together. Isn't that right? And takes and give you the prayer card. Anybody wants one, see? Doesn't matter. So we don't know where we're going to call him from, and nobody knows, so the boy can't tell you, well, we're going to start tonight from number one, I'll give you number one, and you number two, you. he can't do that, see? And it proves it, because he shuffles them up here before you. <laughs> All right? Where was I at? 80, 80, prayer card 80, 81, did I get that one? 81, 82, 83. Is that the... No, she stopped for a baby. 83, would you raise your hand? Back in the back. 84. All right. 85. I didn't see it. 85. 86. 86. The man. 87. I didn't see it. 87. Look at your neighbor's car, maybe a death ball, all right? 87, 88, 88, what's this blind man, what's his number? Is he, is he, is that would be his number, would it? No, no, yeah. oh, oh, it's behind, oh, that's all right, hold it, I'll get it, just stay with it, okay. 92, 92, I don't see it, 92, it's probably some that gave last night, oh you got enough there. Everybody in this prayer line that's standing here, watch just a moment. I want you to be real reverent. Now, just, just, this is Saturday night. You sleep till Sunday school time in the morning. Now, you don't have to go to work. So, now, be real reverent just a few minutes. Take this message. Don't forget the message now. Take the message. Everyone in this prayer line that's a stranger to me that I don't know nothing about you, raise up your hands. All in the prayer line. That's it. Each one of you in that prayer line, 
Will you solemnly promise God that if God shall reveal these things that you have promised, you will believe Him and hold on to it with all your heart? And if I would just come up and pray for each one of you and pass you through here, if you did anything wrong, you make it right now before you come in the line. See, do that. Now, if I remember, the sin be upon you, not upon me. Now, how many in the audience tonight that believes that God is the healer and can heal you and will heal you, and you have faith for it tonight? Raise up your hands, it's your signal. Now, do you promise, you out there, how many in here that knows that I do not know you that's sick or know nothing about you? Raise up your hand. Now, if the Lord Jesus will do exactly what he said he did when he come here on earth, exactly what he promised would take place in the last days, if he will perform that just one time in this prayer line, or one time out there, you'll solemnly believe it as I raise my hands to God that I don't know any of them people there. And there's a few here that I know. I'll try to make out who this man is sitting here, and I believe this man sitting here with a light suit on. I've seen him somewhere. Brother and sister, kid, I know them. And I know that I've got some friends here from Jeffersonville. They're back here somewhere. One of the deacons of our church, Brother Fred Sothman, he's here. Uh, another one of the deacons, or he's a trustee, one of the deacons, a Methodist preacher, Brother Collins, he was here the other day. He and his wife are here. Brother Welch Evans and his family from down in Georgia. Then people drive around, well, for the round trip, I'd say it's about 14 or 1,500 miles every Sunday to hear me preach at Jefferson. Talk about friends. Die for you. Brother Tom Simpson, he's here. And I think some of his family's with him. He's also a visiting brother of mine. Brother Leo and Jean, they're here. They're my fellow workers here in the meeting. Then I've got a friend here, Brother Rodney and Brother Roger and Brother Charlie. They're from up here in Ohio somewhere, up here close to the Indiana line. Personal friends of mine. United Brethren and Methodist Brethren, who just recently come in and been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. They're, they're supposed to be here. They were here yesterday. I had some of them on private interview. And they're here. And outside of that, there's nobody that I can think of. Brother Dow sitting here. I, I know him. Uh, it's a German name. <laughs> I can't say it's Dox or Dow or something like that. Very fine brother from right here in Ohio. has been a great blessing to me. And this man sitting right back here, red tile, sitting right here, uh, you, direct down. Don't I know you? No, the man right behind you there. Don't I know you? I, I, I thought I did. I can't call his name, but I, I know him. And the other morning, the Holy Spirit was leading me down the street. I went into the room to get breakfast. Something said, don't go, walk down the street. I started walking down the street and I wondered, why? Why? Kept walking down the street, and I seen two ladies standing on the corner. I kept walking. I thought, Father, what would you have me do? Just keep walking. And when I walked down there, these ladies turned around and said, Sir, could you tell me where uh, a grocery store is? I said, No, I'm a stranger here. And they looked around and said, Aren't you, Brother Branham? I thought, Here it is. One little woman had been praying real hard to see me privately. She went out on the corner to wait. God sent her out there, and God sent me to my room down. She's sitting right here. There. She told me about something she wanted to speak to me about in private. See, the only thing you have to do is follow the leading of the Spirit. He works on both ends of the line makes it meet just exactly right. Just exactly. And if I should say to the people from Jeffersonville, I, I, well, I wouldn't call them. If I seen, call, unless it would be something that they would, I'd have to tell them or something. But usually it's the other people. You all pray now and believe with all your heart. Now. What did one woman, Jesus told her something that was wrong with her, and she went in and told, and a whole city believed on the Lord, a whole generation, a whole tribe of people believed that he was the Messiah. Now, I am not the Messiah, you know that. Oh my, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a man. But 
the Messiah works in human beings. Now, like I was trying to tell you, there isn't three gods. Anybody believes that is a pagan. There's only one God. He lives in three offices, the fatherhood. All people went crazy trying to study that. Why? It's so simple. God the Father. The Father dispensation. Sonship. Holy Ghost. The same God. Not three gods, one named Father, one named Son, one named Holy Ghost. <laughs> you believe that, brother, you better belong to Catholic Church. That's where you belong. <laughs> Just exactly. That's where it comes from. There's no such teaching in the Bible. <laughs> no such thing as that. Trinity is not even mentioned in the Bible. Not one time. Now, I'm not a... Don't, and I say that some people say, he's a Jesus only. You're a mistake in there. I wouldn't have that kind of spirit on me. Uh, that dogmatic, ungodly thing that... No, sir. I'm not oneness. Not at all. I'm not Trinity either. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe in God manifested in three offices. Now his office is in my heart, in your heart. Not another God somewhere else, another God somewhere else, another God somewhere else. That's as pagan as pagan can be. Never one time was that even thought of until the Nicene Council. Find it in the Bible or find it in history till that time. It's not there. Gene, are you the ones going to bring them to me? All right, brother. Now, if anybody in here has a suspicion that this is not of God, you have a better system to help these people with all godly fear and brotherly respects. I'll take a seat down here with Brother Sullivan. Come to the platform. You can do anything different about it. If you want to come do the same thing, if you think that I'm of the devil and you're of God, then surely you can outdo this. <laughs> you can outdo the devil if you're of God. Then come take the place. <laughs> Not that I am he, but he is here. He's, now, no matter how much he'd anoint me, he's got to anoint you the same way. Now, here stands a woman that I've never seen in my life. She is a total stranger to me. I've never seen her. She's just a woman standing there. And I suppose this is the first time we've ever met as far as I know. Is that right? That is right. Now, if this is our first time meeting, and I'd raise my hands to that. If I ever met you, I, it was somewhere I didn't know who you was. We passed on a street or you sit in a meeting or something like that, I, I wouldn't know you no other way. But just to know you, I don't. And you don't know me. But there's somebody here who does know both of us. That's right. Somebody knows both of us. Now, we're going to forget ourselves and let him speak through me. And now, if I come up here and said, Lady, you're sick. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go get healed. You're healed. Go on. Ah, that'd be all right. If you want to believe it, you're only healed by faith. That's right. So now, you can have a right to doubt that. But upon the Scripture, what I've told you that we're in the end time, and that same God that dwelt in human flesh eating and drinking there, that several hundred years later that was made manifest in flesh, the same God, because he come for redemption to hunt his lost child. When God came down in the Garden of Eden, why didn't he send an angel to hunt Adam? Why didn't he send some kind of a son to hunt Adam? That was his lost child. He'd come himself. That's why Jesus was God-made flesh. He came in human flesh to redeem him. I was going to speak on that tonight, if I had to finish that up last night, the kinsman redeemer, to show that he had to be man. So through that blood, without sex, that unadulterated, created blood of God, I stand here tonight with this, this challenge upon my Bible, standing before a woman to say that God keeps his word. That's where we stand. If God will reveal to me something that you know, what I, if, I, if there's anything about you, I don't know it. But if he will reveal to me, then you'll know, and like the woman at the well of Samaria, go tell your people that come see a man, not Brother Branham now, but the Lord Jesus that in his church manifested himself because he told me the things that's in my life. Would you be willing to do that? Would the church be willing to do that?
It really isn't you that you're standing here for. It's for somebody else. If that's right, raise up your hand. See? He knows what's in your heart. If God then will describe to me or tell me something about this something or somebody, will you believe me? The person is not here. They're in a dying condition with cancer, and you're standing for them. Is that right? Yes. You know that handkerchief you got in your hand there? Take that to them. Don't doubt. No. You won't doubt it. No. Then you have what you ask for. Thank you, now does the church believe if thou canst believe it it shakes some it doesn't others nothing how do you do if Jesus Christ the son of God will reveal to me what you're here for or who you're for or something or another you'll know where it's the truth or not will You'll believe me to be his servant, and I've told you the truth upon the word of God. Are you ready for a shot? You're seriously ill, shattered to death, blackness over you, a cancer. It's a lung cancer that's gone through your system. That is true. Yeah, you say it. Come here. If the Spirit of God that made the Bible, the last commission our Savior give to the church, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, you know something has me anointed. Is that right? Well, then, if I lay hands on you and condemn that devil, will you believe it that it comes from God, the very God that knows about you? Then you can live. Almighty God... Creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, and giver of every good gift. With hands laid upon the woman as the last commission given to our Lord, or by our Lord, that his church should do, I condemn this death hanging over the woman, and let her live in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now write me your testimony. Believe with all your heart. How do you do? You believe God heals rectal trouble too? All right. It's over then. Why'd you touch then? Touch him. I don't know you. God does know you. You believe me to be his servant? I'm just trying to see the angel of the Lord. Did you ever read my book? When he met me that night, he said, if you get the people to believe you, believe me what? That I've told the truth. Now, I've told the Bible story, so that's got to be true. If the Lord will reveal to me something about you, will you believe this? You'll have to know whether that's true or not. You are suffering with uh, gallbladder trouble. That's right. Here it comes. I just look like I expected. He guessed that. I didn't guess that. Quit thinking that. I make you ashamed of yourself now. I don't know what he told you. Just a moment. Yes, sure it is. It's underneath the ribs here, it's gallbladder. That's right. It causes sickness and cramps and everything. That's right. You also got varicose veins. You're suffering with a nervous condition. You have complications, so the doctor says. Your name is Miss Osborne. Go home and be well, Jesus Christ. Shame on you. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. If thou canst believe, all things are possible.
the lady sitting there with her hair swept up like this way, looking right at me. There's something when it struck this woman, struck that woman too, and I looked around, I seen the light over. I don't know, there's something married that woman, and just left the platforms married that woman too. You're suffering, aren't you, sister? Sick? Yes, I see it now. You believe me to be his prophet? You have gallbladder trouble. If that's right, raise up your hand. All right, you're healed. Jesus Christ makes you well. You believe? If you want to believe me to be his servant, that struck your friend sitting there by you so close. It also healed her of a breast trouble she had. You believe it, lady? You accept it? Raise up your hand if you do. All right. Go home believing. You can be made well. I just ask you to believe. That's all. He's in the audience. You see this little lady sitting here praying with all of her heart? She's not praying for herself. She's praying for a, a sister that's got cancer. Yes. Kind of a strange feeling, wasn't it? All right. Now go believe. That's all. <laughs> strange, another woman appeared by me. She's right behind her there praying for the same thing. You believe also, sister. You can have yours. Oh, tell me what they touched. How? They're 20 feet away from you, 30. How could they touch me? They never touched me. But they did touch the high priest, Jesus Christ, that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. I don't know you. We're strangers one to another. If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me something, you realize you're in his presence. One thing wrong, you could drop dead by it. You know that. That's right. You go to believe with all your heart. Your trouble's in your back. That's right. A kidney out of line. That's right. You believe you're going to be healed? Mrs. Combs, you can go home and be well. It's your faith. I don't know you. Oh, what, what, what if it, oh well. You think your mother will come out of that stroke, be all right? All right, go believe it. You can be made well. God bless you. Can God heal cancer and make you well? I believe. All right, go believe it with all your heart and be made well. If thou canst believe, come. There's about 80% of this audience suffering with the same thing, lady. Let me show you. All of you out there is plagued with nervousness. Raise up your hand. Everybody. See? That's your trouble. Comes on about this time of life anyhow, but you've been nervous for a long time. You believe you're over it now? Go oh, thank the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can God heal your back and make you well? Yes. Or just go believe it. I see your trouble, but that's not what it is. You're so nervous you don't know how to hold yourself together. Go believe. It'll be all right. That, this same lady here had a nervous trouble. She's got other troubles, complications, but she's actually won't be praying for nerves. Is that right? Believe it and go be made well. Just believe with all your heart. I don't know you do it. You believe God will heal that female trouble you got? Make you well? Yes. And go believe. Have faith. You believe out there, every one of you? Having faith? That lady sitting right there has got female trouble too. She's praying for him. That's right. Lady kind of got something laid over your lap. That's right. You, you, look around to the next woman. Believe, go right here. You, it's got your hand laying back that way. Believe with all your heart. Go home, yes, sir, and be made well. Jesus Christ, heal. What do you think out there praying for your wife that's backslid? You think she'll come back home and be? Stand up on your feet. All right. I give her back to you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. Go please, sister. Be made well. Jesus Christ heal you and make you well. Now that's about the way she has to get out of the bed of a morning, too. It's arthritis. But God can heal arthritis, can't he? Lord, if you, Lord, just go believe him. Just go say, thank you, Lord. Believe it. What if I didn't even say one thing to you? You said, lay my hands on you. Believe you get well? Come on by then. God bless you. Go receive it, sister, in the name of Jesus. I hear it comes again. <laughs> Another nerve condition. That's right. How many of your audience out there? All your heart, with all that's in you, and you believe with all the strength that you have that God's a healer of nervousness. Raise up your hand like that. If he can heal this woman here, now through that, come here a minute. Yeah, I could tell him. Sure, you Look here, when you put your hand on mine, look here. See my hand? See how normal it looks like I am in hand? I put this hand on here. I look at it. See how it swells up and the white things run over it? Now watch, take this other hand over here and put it on there. Doesn't do it on that one, does it? Doesn't do it on that one. Well, why will it just do it on this one? That was the first gift that was given me. See, it's your contact, your right hand to my left. You're pledging your faith that you believe what I tell you. I take your left hand and raise mine to God. My left is to my heart. Now, you see something happens shows physically what's wrong there. Isn't that right? Uh, if you yeah, try to uh, state the people, is that? Watch when she's looking here. Look at my hand yourself. Now, take her hand off. Now, take this other hand. Put it on it. Doesn't do it there. You're just as much human in this hand as you are in this hand. Now, then you see there's something physically show. That's anointing. That's by promise. Now, you come here. Now, you watch my hand. You believe now with all your heart? I'll lay my hand right here so you'll see it. It's not, you see, it's not the position I'm holding my hand in. It works that. just the same. Now, if that goes away, if it comes back like this other hand, well, then it'll be, you'll know something happened, won't you? Now, I don't know whether you can see it or not. Uh, she puts her hands on mine, swells up. And the little white thing's going, she doesn't realize, she knows she's got a female trouble, but she don't know what it is. It's a tumor. Now, there it is moving. She's had troubles there. Now, I look, I'll take my hand off of her. Look at my hand now. Now, let her take this other hand here and put that hand on. Not one speck of difference. See, this one doesn't show it. This one does. Is that right, lady? You're here to look at it. See? Little white things run over my hand going, what is that? That's a life inside of her that doesn't belong there. Now, the doctor calls it tumor, cancer, so forth like that, but Jesus called it a devil. Why? It's a life. What is she? She's a life, a multiplication of cells. What's a tumor? Multiplication of cells. What's a cancer? Multiplication of cells. What's a cataract? Multiplication of cells. See, that's a life in there. It's the anointing here now of eternal life. And there's a life here that's eternal life, and there's a life there that's death. See? So that's the difference. The woman's a believer. She's nervous. Been that way a long time. Especially since menopause. Got stigmatism in her eyes. She has dizzy spells. Oh, I, I, that's easy, see? But the thing of it is, is watch now and see. Now, I cannot make it go. Or I cannot make it stay away. Now, I just want to hold my hand so you can see what I spoke of a while ago is true. Can you hear me? I'm going to hold my hand here and just let the woman pray and see if it leaves. Just pray. Say, Lord, help me. Now, she prays. See? Now, let her look herself. I haven't looked at my hand. Still there. Now, I'll pray. Father God, hear my prayer, I pray for this woman, that you'll help her according to her faith. Amen. 
didn't move, did it? Still there. Now, I'm not going to move. You just watch my hand. Now, I'll just show you what he said. And we'll make sure it's in. Now, now what did he tell me? He promised me this. I can't make it stay away from her, but she sees it leave. I want you to watch my hand. You watch my hand. Almighty God, not to make a show here, but this will probably be my last time in this city. I pray thee, Lord, to make yourself known that I've told the truth to this people. They're watching my hand. The woman is too. But your words are so true. Sometime when a little weary of frustration hinders, but your promise still remains true. In my name they shall cast out devils. Now, you promised that. You confirmed it to me by an angel that night at Green's Mill, standing in that cabin. Satan, you can't hold her any longer. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let the lady be the judge. It's gone. Is it gone, lady? I've never moved my hand. Now, look. Gone. Put your other hand on it. Not there, is it? You're healed. See what I mean? You believe? Now, how many believers did you raise up your hand? Has not the Bible declared it? Has not God worked with the seed of Abraham the same as he did with Abraham? Isn't the same angel that met Abraham at, at just at the age of Sodom before it was destroyed, isn't that the same works here he's doing tonight? Isn't it the same? Is it? You believe it? Are you Abraham's seed? God said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. How many out there sick? Raise your hands. How many sitting by them that's a believer? Put your hands over on one another. That's all. Just lay your hands on. That's all we have to do. That's just say, you say, well, Brother Branham, I, I want to be baptized. I just baptize you. That's all. Then you're baptized. Is that right? Then you're Christian. Well, then if you say, well, Brother Branham, repent and be baptized. That's what the Bible said. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. Every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is that right? Well, then, if you believe and are baptized, the Bible said you're saved. Is that right? What's the order of baptism? Just put them in the water, bring them back up, baptize. What is the order then for sick? These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. If Brother Branham lays his hands, he never said Brother Branham, he said whosoever. So these signs shall follow them that believe. You're a believer, same as I am. You have the same right to lay your hand on anybody as I do. Each one of your ministers, these pastors, anybody else, they have the right to do it. You believe that? Then I want you to lay hands on one another, bow your head. Don't pray for yourself now. You pray for the next person that you got your hands on because they are praying for you. You believe that with all your heart. I commit you to Jesus Christ as I pray for these claws, your handkerchiefs. Heavenly Father, these handkerchiefs have been brought to me. The people are believing, just like they did in the days of Paul. They seen Paul have those visions, and they know that he, he was sent of God. These people believe the same thing. Now, Lord, you're the same God to us because Abraham was a father of many nations. And they brought from Paul's body handkerchiefs, aprons, and they were taken to the sick and afflicted, and devils went out of the people. Unclean spirits. Diseases of healing. Now I rebuke every devil.